Kindness of the Heart, Chapter 2, Nurse Marina and Hot Chocolate. Marina and Ben stumbled into her penthouse apartment as Marina closed the door behind them. Ben looked around the place, and he was in awe how big it was. The living room was five of two living rooms, a large brown tile floor, a huge white tub underneath, a couch that was the size of three couches. The couch was a cream white color with several brown and white small pillows on it. In front of the couch was a good sized brown glass coffee table with a small bouquet of flowers. On both sides of the couch were small round end tables with table lamps on them. In the background, there were two large stained glass doors along with two large stained glass windows and there was a huge balcony with a patio set on the outside. Next to the balcony doors was a large black grand piano. There was also several framed paintings on the wall and several small tables around it as well. On the other side of the apartment held Marina's bedroom, the kitchen, and the bathrooms. Come on, Marina said as she helped Ben inside. He brought him around to the corner in front of the couch, and there was a fireplace. Gotta get these wet clothes off you, she said, as she took her coat off him and hung it up. He then went over to the fire, turned on the gas, and lit a match as the fire lit. I'm going to get you some dried clothes. Meanwhile, you're going to have to take off your suit, Maria said as she disappeared around the corner. She ran into one of the closets down the hall and grabbed some baggy clothes as she peeked around. She then came back into the living room. I always keep some baggy clothes in just in case. She looked over at Ben and guessed quietly at what she saw. Ben's mask and top and part of his suit were already off, revealing his muscular build. <laughs> Lena had felt her face heat up and was odd at how handsome and muscular he looked. He then looked at her strangely, wondering why she was staring at him. Well, who wouldn't? She then mentally slapped herself. Okay, she said as she walked over to him. You should help. She noticed that he was still shivering. She placed the clothes on the couch and did something that really surprised both Ben and herself. She wrapped her arms around him tightly and pressed her body to his. Ben flushed a scarlet red, like his new face. What are you doing? He asked with sort of shivers. I'm using my body heat to warm you up, she said. Get the blood rush back to your heart too fast, it could kill you. And then he stayed that way for a few minutes before Melina pulled away and grabbed the clothes off the couch. And then she helped keep you warm. She handed him the clothes. Put these on, and I'll go make you some hot chocolate. And I want you to stay near the fire. It'll keep you warm. Melina then headed for the kitchen, which was big enough for a restaurant, and began to make the hot chocolate. As she was waiting for the water to heat up, her mind drifted to Ben, his handsome face and his muscular body. She thought he was very handsome. But what really caught her attention was the scar on his face and his eyes. Lillian knows the feeling of having scars all too well. She saw hard at that thought and absentmindedly held her upper arm. His eyes also caught her attention. She could see guilt and sadness in them, along so many troubles that are weighing on his mind. What did happen to him? What was he doing in the middle of the street in the freezing rain? And a million other questions were running through her mind. She was snapped out of her thoughts when she heard the kettle whistling. She poured the hot water into a mug and mixed cocoa in it. She poured some milk in it because it was very hot and she didn't want him to burn his mouth. She then walked back into the living room and saw Ben sitting cross legs on the floor in front of the fireplace, along with a Siberian husky sitting next to him. I 
I see you at Kamachi, Melina says, seeing Ben's attention. Kamachi is Melina's two-year-old Siberian husky. His coat was a beautiful black and white, and it was very full, shiny, and had bright, ice blue eyes. He looked up at her. Yeah, he kind of introduced himself to me by slobbering all over my face. <laughs> Melina giggled. He does that. It's his way of saying hi. Here, drink this. It'll warm you up. She handed him the cup. You just blow on it because it's pretty hot. He took the cup and took a small sip. And his eyes widened and looked at her. What? Melina asked the juice. In this case, really good. He didn't answer as he took another sip. Melina smiled. Well, thank you. She then walked over and sat down next to him on the floor. So, what happened to you? Why are you out in the street in the rain? He gave her a side glance as he wrote his mug. It's a long story, and I don't want to talk about it right now. It's okay. I understand. You don't have to say anything yet. You can tell me when you're ready. Melina said with a small smile. Thanks, punk. Ben said she took another sip. Melina giggled as she stood up. You hungry? I'm going to make some dinner. Ben's stomach growled loudly, answering her question. Your dinner sounds great. Ben said, looking at her with a small smile, and she returned it. I think you're going to like this guy, thought to herself as she headed for the kitchen.